Hello and welcome back. This is Sherry with Heart and Soulful in the studio today working on the French Journal series. So I'm sitting down. Hopefully I won't get my head in the shot here. But as you can see, my, my journals are multiplying and I don't really have a plan for today's video. I just thought I'd turn the camera on and kind of work today, which means I probably will have to do a lot of editing. But I thought it better to get what I'm working on on camera and if it turns into video, then that's a good thing. So if you're just catching this for the first time, I will put a playlist down below in the description for uh, the entire series so you can watch it from the beginning. And I also include down in the description any digital kits that I'm referring to, any tools and things that I've used. I'll probably just keep adding to it and the same one will show up in every video. Possibly we'll see. Um, that way you don't have to look back. If you can't remember what video something was in, it'll just be a growing list for the whole series. So I hope you check that out too. Like I said, my journals are multiplying. In the last video, I, it was just a short one. I had decided to play around with a couple of extra uh, book covers that I had printed out when I was just kind of designing the kit. I decided to just see what it would look like if I tried to distress them because if you follow me, you know I like things a little grungier and aged and that sort of thing, partly because it hides any mistakes. And if you're anything like me, you're bound to make a mistake. And so I like to find ways to fix them. Some people like things all brand new and perfect and, and that and that's fine. You're, you can choose to do yours that way. I just happen to like old books to look like old books. So I didn't do a ton of distressing as far as, you know, messing up corners. That's something else that you can do. Uh, and I think what I'll do, I don't have any here now, but I'm going to get some matte spray. This is workable fixative, but I want to get like a matte sealer and spray these covers because if you watched the last video, you see this ink is not permanent because it's just from my inkjet printer. So I want to maybe do a spray seal on the covers just so if your hands are oily or wet, if you're ever working on these, you won't continue to have ink come off on your fingers. So that's a step that I didn't mention in the last video because I don't have any. I need to go buy some, some matte, just some spray to seal this. So I've gone ahead and I'll show you where I am so far. I've gone ahead and arranged the three signatures in the two journals that I started. So I'm gonna kind of just flip through and show you what they look like. And then I've gone through some of my papers that I had already printed and just coffee stained papers to create some folios for these two more journals that I'm gonna work on. I think these are probably gonna end up just being naked journals. And by that, I mean, I'll have pages in there, but they're not gonna be very decorative. Uh, so I may just put them in my Etsy shop as naked journals. That way, if you don't wanna have to make the actual book, the book will be made and then you can just go in and add all your decoration to it however you like. So I think I might do that with these two. Okay, so the ones that I already have my signatures ready. So I've, I ended up with three signatures. And if you're new to this again, a signature is just a grouping of folios. So if you take a page and fold it in half, it becomes a folio. Multiple folios make your signature. Multiple signatures make your journal. So you can choose any amount that you want. If you've never done these before, they get chunky when you start adding things to them. So even though this doesn't look like very many pages, some of them are gonna be pockets. I'm gonna be adding envelope pockets. And it's so it's gonna get thick and kind of end up being open like this. So you don't have to worry about, you know, making it as thick as you think you're going to want it because it's going to grow. So I've chosen to do three signatures and each of them are going to have roughly seven folios in them. I'm going to still, like I said, be adding some envelope. I wanted to just show you that these can go in any order and you can really print anything on the reverse side that you want. So I'm just gonna start flipping through. Now remember, each of these was a digital. I printed one side and then I printed a B side on the other side. The other thing that I did yesterday that I hadn't taken the time to do because now I have multiple kits that I've designed. I try to put B sides, which I call them B sides because they're what I wanna print on the back side of a busy page. I decided to make a file on my computer just for B sides. 
it makes it faster if I'm doing any kind of style of journal and I've just printed one side because a lot of times not knowing what I'm going to do, I will just print one side of the digitals. It's kind of one of those things like any kind of mass making job. While you're printing these, you might as well print a few for future journals if you know you're going to be making them in the style. But sometimes I don't go ahead and call, and do anything on the back side because I don't know if I'm going to end up cutting those digitals up for pockets or flips or anything. I maybe don't want to have wasted the ink to print it on the back side if it's not going to actually be a page in my journal, if that makes any sense to you. So I have a bin where maybe I've printed one side of something. And so for me, it made it much faster to print the B sides when I wanted them, if I had them all in one file. So I did that yesterday and that actually was really handy because if you watched the previous videos, some of these French ephemera things, I had printed just one side on a whole batch of them and I didn't have anything on the reverse side. And so as I was flipping through my journal that I was putting together, I was ending up with too many blank sides for me. Uh, I, I like them to have a little bit of something on them, even though it's subtle where you can write on it. I just didn't want to see a lot of blank pages like this. So I took the time as I after I got them in my or order that I wanted, I looked and if I had a blank page that I didn't want there, I would pull it out and go uh, print it, print the back side. So I'm going to just flip through these real quick so you can see what mine look like. And I again, I did three of my new collage digitals in each signature. So there's three in this one, three in this one, three in this one. And then I filled in with other French ephemera and different things. So let's just kind of quickly flip through these. Just so you see how I like my my balance to be as far as busy and plain because I'm going to end up adding and decorating these. But I still want to feel like I have blank writable space and just interest to look at. And so I kind of look maybe at color. Maybe I want it to contrast. Maybe I want it to kind of blend in together. And then I, this is the center of the first signature. And I just would try to put things together that I, that I liked, you know, the look side by side. And there's that, that blank page. So this signature ended up really with only two pages because I had one blank side and everything else at least has what I call a B-side on it. So that's the first signature. And then we go to the second one. And you'll see I kind of look at, um, this has windows, so it has this sort of lines this way and lines this way, and this is architectural. So I liked the look of that ledger being on the other side and with some of the same green in it. Again, this one had some, you know, red and or orangey red and blue in it. And so I liked it across from that one. And then this center has, is going to have, this will be a pocket. I could just leave this as a flip out, not make it a pocket, you know, where you have just some extra room to write. I could just leave it folded up that way, but I may make it, you know, close it, and then that's a place to, you can still write on here or here, but I may, would be able to stick something inside. So I kind of get to this point, and then as before I stitch my signatures into the book, I'll make a decision about anything that I need to do before they get sewn in. Okay, that's the end of my second signature, and here's my third. And I know you can't tell on camera so much, but I really like having their different textures because they're coffee stained, they get a little aged and crinkly, and I like that. But then this is printed on a different kind of paper. So it's it's nice as you flip through to kind of even have your papers feel different. Okay, 
that's the center of my signature. But you can see there's, you know, some interest, but a lot of kind of restful space. And that's the very end. Okay, so that is one journal that's ready for its next step. And then this is the other one. Now this one, again, if you haven't watched, I have made some mistakes on my cover, but this is one for sure. Maybe all of them end up with a piece of slow stitch fabric that's gonna cover all of this once I've had my signature stitched in. So you won't see that. Okay, so this is my next one. For, and I did them in a different order. I wasn't paying too much attention. I don't really want them exactly the same. Even though they have some of the same elements. And you, you don't have to have all of your pages. You know, I cut these on a guillotine, but you can use a tear ruler and, you know, have your edges not perfect. You can just... And, and your papers don't all have to be the same size, so I kind of did some variety in this one. That's the center of my signature. And most of these have seven, but I'm not, you know, when I added these kind of things, this is pretty thin, they may have eight or nine. So it really, it really doesn't matter. They don't have to all be the same. It's really kind of just what you like and where you feel like your signature has enough pieces of paper in it, you know, knowing that it's gonna, it's gonna thicken up. So this is my second signature. And again, this one was with graph paper in the other journal. I had it with ledger paper on this one. That was the second one, and here's the final one. That's the center. happy with those. I like how they're going to look. They're going to end up being a nice size for my spine, even though that doesn't look very thick. Again, it's going to get thicker. So that's the two that I had finished. And then the two that I ended up, because I, I was playing around with distressing these covers, I ended up with two more. And I thought, well, I'll just make these a little different. I'm not going to go back and print more of my digitals, the collages, just because I don't want to take the time to do that. But I may go through my bin because these are a little smaller. I may have partial pieces that would look good um, to fit in here to give them a little bit more interest because when you see, when I go through these pages, there's really, there's no collage things. These are all just some of the French ephemera that I already had printed out. Again, I didn't print on the back side. I didn't take the time to do it on this one because I'm thinking I want to list these as kind of naked journals, really simple and plain. That way, whoever purchases them can go ahead and uh, add to them and decorate them. So I don't. I I, I picked 20 or 21 uh, folios, which is going to be pretty thick for this size of a spine. You can see it almost takes up the whole thing. But that way, you can just add maybe a little to this, uh, or a lot, but it can just be a journal you write on. And you might think, well, who's going to want to write on this it's already written on? But that's kind of the fun of, you know, doing your journals like art journals or, or just these fun journals is you can stick something on this, and this is a background for maybe a little collage that you're gonna add. 
of memorabilia things, stamps, or you can still write on this. Maybe you're writing with a gold pen or a black pen or a white pen or any other kind of colored pen. You can, you can still journal on all these pages. And, you know, that's part of the fun of having something other than just a totally blank page. So I haven't organized these into any sort of signatures. I could leave them like this and do, you know, like a, a book binding, like a pamphlet stitch. Instead of having them in signatures, do each one connected to the next one. I've done books like that, but I'm thinking I want to put these in signatures. So I'm kind of just going to go through this the way that I do it when I'm just trying to put something together. So I might take, for example, similar things and put them in a stack, like these are all printed French ephemera, but then I have some book pages and I have some just lined, different kinds of lined paper. So, you know, or something that's more plain. So maybe I sort them first. That way I can kind of keep my, my things sort of even. So this one's kind of different because it has, um, this was one of my uh, fresco backgrounds, I think, a, a kit that I have. Just when you want kind of some color and a, a, a nice background for a collage, um, this is another kit and it's my uh, fresco finishes is the name of this kit. So I might put this one, let's see what I have as far as even numbers. I can do three signatures again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So maybe I put it with this group that I have here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's good, so I could have three in each. And then I have three of these. Okay, so I think I'll do it that way if you're following me. Let's start with these because I only have three. So I'm going to have three signatures. So I would say I want maybe one in each. Oh, I have four. Um, let's do this. We'll count this as one because it's two short pieces. They can go together. So let's do this three piles. And then I can do the same thing here. And this one has a pocket. And I want that one in the middle. Actually, I'll put that there. Oops. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. And then I have two. Oh, so I guess I will split these two up. And I'll do that. I'm looking at thicknesses and types of paper. Let's do that. Okay. So I have those kind of sorted, and then I have these. So let's see. One, two, three. Let's do that. Two, three. Let's just do that. We're going to call that even enough. Okay, and then you'll just take one group and then kind of put it, start putting these. Maybe I want to alternate these and not have them right next to each other. So maybe I do this. And then maybe add this one in. Something that has some writing on it. That. Since this is plain, I maybe I don't want it in the middle. Maybe I'll put something that at least has lines on it. So let's call that one signature. And then this one is gonna you're gonna see it next to this. So let's see. Maybe I do this one. That.
Okay, and that could be a signature. And then this one. Something like that. Or maybe I want this. Let's see. I think I want this. I think it's going to have a pocket. Maybe I'll fold it the other direction and put it in the middle. Something like that. Okay, so that could be three signatures. And then maybe I want to, if I kind of like them being uneven here, but you can see when you stack papers inside of each other, the more closer you get to the center, the more they stick out. So you can maybe take the first two and then, you know, put these in your trim, trimmer and trim them shorter if you want. So I kind of like things being uneven. Same with top and bottom. You don't have to have them all be the same. So that can be my signatures for here. So that's a pretty plain journal at this point, but you can add to it or not uh, as far as little interesting things that we stick in between. Maybe I want to put some thinner paper that's coffee stain that's like tissue that you can draw on or something like that. So I'll play around with these a little bit more before I actually sew them in in case I want to add anything. So we'll set that one aside for now. And then I need to do the same thing with this one. This one I do have um, some collage papers because I had them already printed out. These are from these are from Roxy Creations French Chateau. And then this was one of mine that I was, um, before I finished my design, I ended up taking that feather out. So I have those are patterned. These are kind of, let's see what else I have. That's one of mine from a different kit. And same with that one. So let's see, I have one, two, two, four, five. So maybe if I if I don't have another busy one, we'll put that in that pile. Let's see. Um, maybe I. This is all the ephemera, and these were the same, just on different paper. So I may or may not want those in there, or maybe I do, and I put them right next to each other on purpose if they kind of line up, that might be kind of fun. So we'll, we'll see about that. It's kind of plain, let's see that one. Another book page. And this one, I don't know, this one kind of falls into two categories. So let's see what I ended up with here. I need a third one over here, maybe. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Hmm. Let's take maybe that and add that there. Okay, let's just start making some piles. I could grab another book page and do that, but I'm not gonna worry about that too much. Let's do that. And then one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, 
Okay, let me see how many I have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that works. Okay. And then we will just see. Maybe I start with this because it does have something on it. And that kind of does too. So maybe I break that up. Okay, there's one. Maybe this one. And I can actually, oh, that's kind of like a little corner pocket thing. Oh, that's kind of cute. Okay, that. And then, maybe like that. Let's see, what else? I kind of like that. Okay, so that would be my three signatures. So just kind of sort them. They obviously don't have to be exact. And then I can go back and decide if I want to shorten any of these pages, depending on how it fits in my, my journal. That one's a little wide, so maybe I want to fold that over a little bit more. Okay, so before I would be ready to sew these in again, I'm gonna go through each page again, see if there's any pockets or anything like that that I need to glue up, things that maybe I have folded. And, and so I'll go through that and before I stitch them in. But the other thing that I wanna do before I stitch them in is I had started some envelopes, some that are gonna be pockets that will be stuck on, but some might be part of my signature. So for this, these journals, you know, I, I only have less width to work with. So I would have to really make sure, you know, that they fit within my space and where I want them to go. Because again, for me, I'm going to go through and see if I want something that looks, maybe it, it draws this color over here a little bit. So maybe I, you know, add something just to give a plain area more interest because maybe I have some pages that really don't have much going on. And I'd want to add to that. The other thing is things like this, where this is really thin, if this is gonna be a pocket, I would want to put that page together 
lining this so that it's a little thicker because otherwise it's just going to tear. So things like that I need to figure out before I sew them in. So um, my next step is going to be to go through every page. I'm going to make, I'm going to mass make some envelopes like I've been working on. I started these yesterday and I'm going to go through and show you what I did. And I might may do some on camera today because each one has its own unique set of problems because I'm using recycled envelopes and I may not know exactly where it's going to go in these journals. I don't want to overthink it too much when I'm making them. I would rather make a bunch because I'm having fun with that. And if I don't use them in any of these four journals, I'll just put them in my box for later for something else. But I'm kind of, you know, keeping in mind that I want a variety that maybe gets sewn into my signatures. And then some, because I make a mistake or something happens to the envelope going through the printer or whatever, it's going to end up just being glued onto something. Okay, so apologies. Different sleeves, different day. I had to abruptly end my video that I was working on. So this is actually the next day and I'm going to go ahead and end this video for today. We've gotten the signatures for all four journals laid out and rather than continue this one, I'm going to just end it here and then do a new video for working on the envelopes. And so we'll continue from there. So have a great rest of your day. Go make something. Bye.